I, I, have, I have no idea what we've just done. Oh no, hang on, hang on. About the 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 camel. Yes. Okay. So we went for a fly earlier today, and then we saw a water place that had a camel in it, which you weren't happy with. So you said, we're gonna go back and sort out that camel. So we landed the plane over the top of the house on which wasn't actually the airstrip jack. And then we got in brews of the cruiser with a um, implements to sort out the camel. And we drove about, I don't know, 70, 70 kilometers out to the well, said good night to the camel. And then we took a back strap off the camel, which apparently you can eat. And so now um, we're going to put that back strap of the camel into the cool room. That's right. Let's go. Right. Viewer discretion is advised, or we're going to harvest some of the meat of the camel when we remove it from the yards. Maggie's on. Fuel pump is on. Throttles back a bit. Choke on. Up. Will there be any in-flight service, uh, Jack? Uh, we've got muesli bars. Um, one. Right. Yep. We've also got the water bottle. No, uh, no wine selection. No, no. The wine selection's off today. Okay. You've got your emergency brace positions. You've got a handle up there. And you've got the dash that you can hold on to. Yep, got it. Now, in between your legs, you'll see a pouch. Yes. Inside that pouch, there is a EPIRB. Ah, uh, yes. We also have in the back, we've got a sat phone, which is charged yep. and ready to operate. We have UHF communications down to the station, to Jasmine. Yes. We've got VHF communications to everyone else in the air, in the area. Yes, now to everyone who is watching and has watched previously, we are now using the N-Flight Technology digital audio recording cable, which allows us to put our intercom into our GoPros. So they'll be able to hear me scream. All right, Jack, I guess this is a point where I can say thanks for the experience, but um, I'll get out here. You've booked the ticket. The, the, you know, the doors have closed. The, the c cabin crew have secured all doors. Right. Well, I just, I just want my boys to know I love them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hatches and harnesses. Your seatbelt is at. Roger. And your door is secure. Roger. My door is secure. Good to go? Good to go. Okay, and flaps on. And there we are, airborne. Wow. So, the flaps give us that little kick for yeah. our short field takeoff. Yeah, that just just popped up almost like a vertical takeoff. He was It's spectacular, Jack. Now, for everyone, this is the first time we have taken Ant up for a flight. And this is going to be giving him quite a good understanding of the map to ground in a short period of time. Yeah, you can see your, um, you know, from a plan view, you can see all your waterways, you just, you sort of, what are they called, dead drainage, drainage patterns or whatever they're called. But I noticed, Jack, uh, this says warning persons flying this aircraft at their own risk. I'm, I'm glad you can read. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I noticed that before we got up here. Interestingly, that Parsons Bluff, and then this water point is called Lyle Brown. Um, so Lyle Brown was an explorer who was travelling around in a... Uh, he 
个。Trying to get an idea on what that is in the yards. Am I looking at a camel down there, Ant? I believe I am. Where? In the, in the, inside, inside the, the yard. yard? Yeah, inside the yards we've got a camel. Pumps on. Going for a, a low level approach. We don't want to stir him up. But we might be having steak tonight. Roll it around. Yes, PID camel. Yeah, same. Yes. So will the uh, will the cattle come in while the camel's there? No. Yeah, they will. They run a risk of being um, chomped and beaten. Okay. But they'll be um, operating normally. But that camel's basically stealing the water that you. Yeah, that we have there for the cattle. It'll be in good condition. <laughs> It'll be great to cut up. <laughs> and well hydrated. Yeah. It's not droughted, you know. I'm looking forward to this, Ant. Uh, oh. I truly am. I'm not. going to hold off and then touch down just after the rubber. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Very well done. Great landing. Good flying. We return in one piece. I just like the bees. We didn't end up in <laughs> hospital. <laughs> if that's our standard of good work. <laughs> Awesome. Well done. So we're down here at Lyle Brown. We've readied up somewhere around 300, 400 metres from the water point. We're going to move in quietly and gently, check to see if we've got any other customers and make sure that our cattle are going to be safe and undisturbed as quickly and efficiently as we can. Ant's going to dispatch the camel and then we'll get into the process of how we deal with the carcass and what we do to get meat out of it. Once we drop that camel yep. and you've got that clear, I'll go in and I will slice the throat yep. to get a good bleed happening. Yep. So this camel was dispatched nice and quickly. It had the two shots. We've got a heart shot and we've got a head shot. Textbook, perfect. I jumped in and I've cut the throat to bleed it out so that when we're dealing with the meat, it's a lot nicer. We're looking at a female camel here. And so we're likely to have nicer meat. I'm no expert when it comes to getting their age. And I know that camels can come up and they'll end up living up to 70 years. So the fact that we've got a female in here and she's in very good condition and she's got her summer coat on. So we're gonna have some decent meat coming out of this one and we don't wanna waste it. So we're gonna drag the camel a respectable distance away from the water point. Old school was a quarter mile. We run with 400 meters, same, same. We want to do this away from the water point so that we don't attract any feral animals, wild dogs, to the area. It's going to not be odorous when we are working at the cattle yards. We're going to jump in, Ant's not going to get bogged again, and we'll get her away from the yards and we'll test out his knife skills. We've shoved an improvised wedge just under the top of the rib cage to give ourselves a bit of space under here. So I'll map out what we're going to do to get the back strap, which is a nice and tender cut of the animal and it yields fast and it yields well. We're going to take a cut along the top of the shoulder blade 
follow along the edge of the rib cage, just near the hip bone. I'm gonna cut back towards the spine, and then we're going to remove the hump. So I've got two knives with me. One is a filleting knife, which is quite nice. The other is a high carbon blade, which I can sharpen on just about anything. I like to use this one on cutting the skin because it is very thick. Camel skin is so thick and well insulated that hang a leg up in a freezer or a fridge and will only drop two degrees overnight. Not very well known is that camels originated in North America, around Canada. So they're actually extremely well adapted to freezing temperatures and that insulation also helps them in the high temperatures we have here in Australia, but also at night in the desert, it can get down to minus five degrees. So they're extremely well insulated, which means that they've got a very thick skin. That's why I use a knife, which can be sharpened quick. So as we go, we'll see how much we actually show. This is life out here. Right, so I've now made that penetrating cut. It's time to get in and take the fat and the skin off the hump so we can get to that back strap. Put a little hook through there so I can grab it with my hand and peel it away as I go. And where did you learn how to do this, Jack? Uh, if I can say, the school of hard knocks. Yeah. Now, Jack, I just want to say that your dad's currently uh, uh, recovering, let's just say that, from um, a knife accident. So let's just keep one in the family at the minute, if you don't mind. Right, so I've gotten down to the spine here. Yeah. And so we just need to cut out and get this fat away from where we are working. So. The camel fat is chemically different to the fat that us humans have. The, the chemical breakdown process from this fat into water yields one kilo of fat makes 1.1 kilos of water, which is just absolutely incredible. So no, they don't store water in their hump as water, but they do store it as fat. So as I've been going along, I've worked along the rib cage. I've gotten onto the spine here and I'm just lightly touching it. It's, it's basically falling apart and the knife is just cleaving it. And I'm rolling it back onto the fat here, which keeps it sterile. And final cut, just along the edge there. And there you go, there's your foot long. We're looking at a piece of meat that's similar in the length to the size of my torso and it's a very light and quite a lean meat. So there's our nice bit of meat. We can take that back to the cool room, we can hang it up, leave it for a day or two, then cut it into steaks. For the dogs? No, for us. For us, Jack. Yes, it is an absolutely beautiful meat to eat. Chemical free, hormone free. It is free range organic beef that is just wandering around out here yeah. you, you cannot waste it it's an absolute shame that there's not a bigger market for it okay. we should be harvesting this commercially yep so so basically jack if you if you didn't um control the the camel population then you would not be able to run a viable cattle station no uh unfortunately because there's no viable market for them you have to control them to make sure that your cattle business is running successfully, take control of the feral animals, the non-contributors to the system. So we're gonna wrap this up and then we can transfer it to the angle or by the time we get home, which is about a 45 minute drive from here, 
put it straight in the mate room into the cool room and likely by that time grab a beer as well so i'm cutting i'm cutting from there yep or you can go from here yeah down to there okay so you just you come in like this yep oh, okay and how deep do you go in just to the top yeah i'm just taking out the skin okay and i'm okay right down to here to about where until you meet up with the other the other cut Yeah, yep, there. Good. Yep. Right, and so then we're going to trace from here yep. along the rib cage back to here. Okay. And just the just the just the top of it here. Yeah, come come back in here a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant work. Yeah, and where? Keep going back. You've got a hip bone to hit. Out there. Yeah. And then down. Go south. Not quite as elegant as you, Jack. There's a few few years um, practice yeah, there. Yeah, few years. Uh, could you give me a different knife, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> what was it about a tradesman and his tools? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Radio. I was just checking if the knife was around the right way, Jack. That's sweat, is it? That is sweat. Just to show everyone the, the amount of sweat that... Yep. Can you make jerky out of this as well, Jack? I do make jerky out of it. And it is amazing. They are named the same as cattle. So you've got bull camels, you've got calves, and you've got cows. Huh. So, yeah, you also get camel milk. There is a market for camel milk. Roughly, probably around seven and a half kilos. So if you're looking at beef um, and beef prices these days, yeah, we've got $150 worth of meat there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's um, cost us a couple of dollars in ammunition, a bit of our time and driving down here. Yeah. But I don't think we've quite used that because we've also had the positive impact on our environment and on our livestock business because our primary goal out here is to produce beef and despite this being beef, it's not the beef that the people want. Um, and that's just an absolute shame. You know, there's parts of the world where they are starving and they want protein. We've got it here and we've just got to be able to get it to them. Okay. Great. Right, so we're gonna duck back to the yards. Um, we're just gonna tidy that up. So we're gonna crack on with our primary task here and we will see you guys later. Is there a smart way to do this, Jack, or are you just going to, you know, if, <laughs> you just, is this a learn by losing experience, is it? This thing's not going to jump or anything, is it? Well, you shot it earlier, so okay. it's not likely to jump. There you go. All right. There you go. And uh, here's your reward from the other character. Oh, hey. oh, 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 oh. Well, there's only one thing I can say about this, Jack, is I've probably had a better day than you have, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.